friends once again how are you doing okay so today's video is going to be um Okay, today's video is going to be something this actually happened to me and you know and I decided to do a video on this because I need it you know and I feel that I should say this not just for anything because right from time growing up I have always been very 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 partial to anything that has to do with uh, being bullied in the sense that I have never been able to stand for it I don't I can't stand for someone maltreating another person it's something that gets to me I can't stand for, for someone you know bullying someone else I can't when I was in uh, school I went to FG Shagam if you guys are not aware I went to FG Shagam I'm, 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 a, I'm a federal government girls college Shagam uh, 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 grad um, oldie and while in Shagam I earned the name Voltron why did I earn that name? Because I was always, even the things, even the ones that didn't concern me, I was always at there for those who didn't have anyone to speak for them. That was just, even if I wasn't your friend, I didn't care. And so my video today, I'm going to be talking about how I was bullied at the gym and what I did. Now, like I've said before in one of my previous videos about the fact that in France, there are certain people in France that have difficulty, very, very hard time, um, understanding that, you know, we have an equal playing field in this world that we are. The moment they notice or see you as a black person, they automatically have this air of, on their own authority, they think that they can, you know, lord out on people. Now, I'm going to say this because what the vibe that I noticed there, I love my, I, I enjoy going to the gym, don't get me wrong. But I noticed the vibe, you know. I recall when I first started, you know, they all seemed really, um, this set of women, they all seemed really, you know, friendly. But I'm this kind of person, I'm very, very, I'm a, I'm a very sensitive person. And I, I get, I, I sense vibes very easily. So you may not speak. But I sense it. That's how I am. So I wasn't too giving away of myself. I recall one time she saw my son. I was like, ah, oh, your son, he's so beautiful. He's so handsome. Uh, I think you're like, oh, I have a little uh, granddaughter who's Senegalese. I'm like, okay, here comes the story of Africa again. You know, for me, like I said, there are certain things when I begin to, when I feel something, you know, I have been a victim of not listening to my instincts in the past. But this time, I just did not, I could not. Maybe because I have experienced it before. Who knows? So fast forward to, you know, lots of things. One day this lady comes up to me, you know, because, you know, once I walk into the gym, you know, hi, hello, what's up, good morning, you know, go in, do your thing, and you go. I always try to be very positive. I've said it before in my previous video about staying motivated. It's one of the things I do. I try to, have, sometimes I'm so tired, you know, I don't, but when I'm tired, I don't go. But when I really, really know I want to go, I just have this smile. It, a smile is always pasted on my face at all times, you know. So on this day, I walked into the gym, you know, said hi to the gym owner, you know, got into my new program. Hey, let's go. And then I was, you know, doing, and I think I was supposed to be, reflecting or something and this lady comes up to me and says to me in french that means is this how we do sports now meaning she was trying to tell me that oh i was you know uh i wasn't you know working i wasn't doing what i was supposed to do and that was when you know my eyes saw red no my eyes did not see red yet they saw like pink first blue pink and that was when I decided to cut it. Now, fast forward. On this day, I came to the gym. I went into the locker room. Put, put my stuff, you know, where it was supposed to be. There are lots of lockers. I put my stuff there. Right from time, you know, when I got there, the owner said, you can put your stuff in the locker. Or you can put it on the bench. It's as you want. Just make sure that your valuables, you always have it with you. I'm like, fine, you know. So I come in, I put my stuff on the bench. Now, that day there was a lot of this influx of people, understandably. And um, 
I finish up, I walk into the locker room, and lo and behold, my stuff, I found them on the floor. I was like, the hell? So, I was upset, but I didn't see whom to ask. I asked, you know, and I kept on, I was like, okay, I, I need to find out who did this, because this is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is madness. This is, this can't be right. So I dropped a little note on the day I went back to the gym and I said in French, um, whoever, you know, did this, I think I have the notes, I still have the notes with me, you know, and I said, you know, in French, I said, whoever did this, please, I would ask you for the respect of everyone. Um, this is a collective establishment, we should all let respect each other and each other's, you know, belongings. There is no reason for you to have kept my things on the floor. It must not repeat itself again. Respect is receipt protocol. And I left it there on my back. And then I, at this time, I was still asking everyone, where is my, who did this, who did this? Everyone was like, no, no, no. Now there's this particular lady whom I met there. Right from the day she saw me, she had this uh, about her where I was concerned. I didn't know what, but she just, you know, and on my own, I was admiring her. I was like, oh, this is such a lovely old lady. You know, she looks so trim, you know, platinum hair. She looks so amazing. So I was like, whoa. But then I noticed that she was giving me this, you know, who do you think you are? I'm like, whoa. okay. So I was like, okay, I don't want no trouble. So I walked up to her and I asked her, you know, I'm like she has never said hi to me and I've never bothered to say hi to her. So I didn't care and I didn't want to know. And she walks up and I walk up to her and I'm like, listen, um, I'm looking for the culprits who did this. And I really, really want to know who did this to my stuff. And she's like, oh, no, 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 c'est pas moi, hein? non, on a, moi j'ai vu, euh, j'ai vu euh, le petit annonce, tu l'avais fait, j'ai vu le petit affiche, mais c'est pas nous, hein, c'est pas moi, hein? you know, and I was like, okay, it's enough, she was like, oh, no, 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 si c'était moi, je te dirais, hein, I'm like, fine, madam, I hear you, you know, I was like, okay, I'm still on my hunt, I'm still looking for this person, you know, platinum blonde says she wasn't the one, I was like, okay, fine. You know, I keep on doing my FBI investigation. I met some other people and they were like, I mean, it's really wrong for somebody to touch your stuff when you're not there. I mean, if I decide I want to say, I tell, if I decide and say someone stole my stuff, I'm legit okay. I'm legit in my right because you don't have a right to touch my stuff. Okay, so I'm doing my thing and one of these days I'm doing my thing. I come back to the gym, you know, after a while, I'm doing my thing and then I walk into the locker room they just finished so i just i wanted because i wanted i was thinking I, I knew it had to be someone who does um uh, the collective uh, the um um you know the collective uh, cost circuits i just knew it had to be someone in that circle there was no other person that could have done it so i walk up to you know i just walk in and i look in and this woman platinum blonde goes hey ça suffit no 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 avec ton sac rouge là mais c'est c'est bon and i was like hmm? like what what and i was looking like who she talk me is she talking to me she was like oh oui je te parle ça suffit hein no 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 avec ton sac rouge là tu tu nous embêtes and i'm like oh no and I just go, I just, that was when the pink turned red, you know, I initially, I said that my eyes saw pink the first time, and then my eyes just went, my, I just saw red, and I just went, boom, on hand. I was like, listen, I'm going to ask you again today, for the last time, did you touch my bag? And she says, no, and I said, so why the hell are you talking? I'm like, oh, no, no, I said, hey, listen, I asked you. All this conversation was in French. I can't go on an expletive in French. In French, and I was like, all these things you're saying, it is none of your business. I asked you. You categorically told me that you did not touch my stuff. And here I am. I walk into the locker room. Why are you bothered that I'm here? And she now goes. And I said, hey. I asked her. I said, I'm going to ask you again, two times. Did you touch my stuff? Were you the one who put my stuff on the floor? And she says no. And I said, hey, madam, 
I'm gonna talk to you as a Nigerian. Maybe you don't know who I am. I am in Nigeria. In Nigeria, it's not done. We do not accept, people don't talk to us anyhow. It's not done. If you do not know who a Nigerian is, if you don't know who Nigerians are, madam, go and find out. Go and look for, go and find out who we are. I said, hey, I know this. I don't look like those people whom you talk to that when you do woo and they now cover. I said, I'm not in that category. Madam, if you are not the one that put my sack on the floor, if you are not the one that put my bag on the floor, if you are not the one that put my gym bag on the floor, shut the hell up. And, you know, and I told her, I said, and you have no right. You have no right at all, none at all, to tell me what is and isn't enough. You have no right. That is not your place. Now, this was happening, and I noticed there were some people who were looking around and, you know, like, oh, I'm les le dames, les filles, ça suffit, ça suffit. And I'm like, you know, I'm les filles, you know, les filles, les filles, ça suffit, you know. And I was like, okay, okay, girl, control yourself, you know. <sighs> Take a deep breath, Ooh, you know. And, you know, this got me thinking. Now, just two weeks ago, after this happened, this is not so long ago, after this happened, I have a very good friend. Um, at the gym. She's a psychologist. She's she doesn't yeah, she's very she's very discreet. I met her, she was among the first people I met, you know, very wonderful lady. And I met her uh on the uh, there. She was the first person actually that actually spoke to me when I uh, got there. And she, you know, we had this morning uh tea and she was like, "Okay, we're going to have some tea or coffee." You know, I was like, "Okay, fine." It was a beautiful day. And we're like, okay, I was really feeling, you know, in my elements, you know. And we walk, I know, walk in there and she was like, okay, are you ready? She came for the morning session, so I came for the afternoon session. And she was like, okay, are you ready? I'm like, yeah, let's, you know, go. We were debating, or just on the way, we were debating between Starbucks or just another, you know, tea place or coffee or something. So we now chose, I was like, listen, I'm not crazy about Starbucks. Sorry, Starbucks. I'm not crazy. I was like, it's just a name, you know. <laughs> so I was, she was like, okay. I was like, well, if you want us to go to Starbucks, we can go. But I am not, you know. So we just took one lovely spot that you know makes tea, you know. And then you know, listen, you guys. I had no clue what was going on. And then she was like, uh, did moi. I was like, oh, you know. Qu'est-ce que c'est passé? I was like, what? She was like, yes, because one other lady there you know told her that they these bullies came to meet her and told her that she should stop talking to me huh i was like really and she was like yeah and she was like what happened you know and she was like that the, the lady in question where you know was like no she cannot stop talking to me this person has been a very good a friend to me since I came to this gym. She's helped me, you know, since I came into the gym, you know. she The lady had issues, so I, I, you know, I was just giving her a shoulder. I just gave her a shoulder to lean on, and I was always, you know, by her side, you know. Nothing, it wasn't, I wasn't even, but I was just doing my own part where I, I thought I could help, you know. And she was like, no, 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 that I cannot let Chinere go. That Chinere has been very good to me since, you know, I got here. She's been so nice and so wonderful. Gave me a shoulder to cry on when I, you know, like okay now you guys hold on i'm just blowing my trumpet <laughs> okay so let me just continue okay give me a moment to enjoy this <sighs> okay let's continue and then you know she was like really and i was like really she was like yeah and then she told them off i was like okay she did go and she was like so what happened and i told her i remember i told you this lady is a psychologist i knew she was psychoanalyzing me without me knowing that she was psychoanalyzing me and then we got talking and she was like and you know she was asking me some very you know funny questions uh est-ce que ça tombe bête uh, si uh, you know she was asking me est-ce que ça tombe bête si uh, il te touche uh, il touche ton sac i was like of course they should no one should touch my but my bag you know i mean i understand if you know there's an influx of people and then you need space you can move my bag somewhere but put it back or not put my bag on the floor you know that i get you know she was like okay and she was like you know she was just asking me some very funny questions i was like you know, and I was like, oh my God. But, you know, in my mind, I was like, she's just psychoanalyzing. But I didn't care. Now, I now told her something. I said, listen, I'm not... She was like, okay, maybe you could. She was like, maybe you could. You know, just look for some another spot. I was like, hell no. You know me? I'm a Nigerian. 
I've sucked it before. I'm talking it again. I mean, Nigerian. I cannot give them the satisfaction. I like. I told. I said no. They are bullies. And I cannot give them satisfaction of thinking or believing that, you know, I know I said I can't do that. I said, no, I can't. I know I can't. No, 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 no. Sassafi pa. I was like, she was, she was now smiling, you know. I, of course, I like I said, I knew she was analyzing me and stuff. And then she was like, oh, good for you. You got your own, you know, you got yourself handled. So for me, the purpose of this video is... I want to teach, I want to tell you guys, if you guys suffer from the hands of bullies, bullies come in different ways. We have emotional bullies. We have psychological bullies. We have bullies that are actually, they're, they're intimidating, they are intimidating you without you knowing that. You just feel it. You, yeah, they are there, you know. So I'm just going to give you a few points that have helped me in dealing with bullies. First and foremost, ignore them. That's one of the things I did most of the time. When they come with all their, you know, once we, we say the good mornings, I just face my day. Ignore them. Don't let them or don't 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 bring them too close to you. Whatever it may be in the form of uh, Whether they are don't don't just just put the you know put that wall there. Don't deal with them Ignore them. Another thing you're going to tell is they will also they will definitely look for how to get under your skin Remember I talked about the fact that she came to meet me and she said oh is this how you do sports now? And I'm like what the you know they will always they will definitely look for how to get under your skin you must have and build you know a coping mechanism and the coping mechanism like i said my eyes saw pink and i had to like you know talk to myself and say okay it's not that bad cool down you know and there was something my friend told me and it, that's exactly what I, I i you know i i understood from this lady she says it's very hard for us as women in the world that we are living in but then what I hate more than anything, this is what she telling me, this. she said, what I hate more than anything is a woman who behaves or who begins to take the place of a man. You begin to say the things a man says. And, and, I told, and she was like, even most men are not that flippant. And I, I said, exactly. She, this lady has that. She comes in as, you know, she begins to throw out, you know, things that sexist misogynistic men would do and say a woman she's this is what she does you know so this is one of the things you know you have to understand you know and when she told me this i was like yes you hit the nail on the head you know so do not let them they will try to get under the your skin you have to keep you know develop your own coping mechanism and please make sure that your coping mechanism is not self-destruct you it's all about positive vibes negative vibes are more and they outweigh positive vibes you could have a, on a bar on a scale of one to ten you only have one bar that is a positive vibe the remaining nine are negative so you must for you to be able to thrive and survive you must be able to blow your positive vibes so high that the negative vibes cannot cannot overshadow you i don't know where i learned this from i don't, I don't know where I, I like i said i'm nigerian maybe it's a nigerian factor i don't know how i learned this but this is something that has helped me a lot even when i'm going through difficulties you know and it's it's something that i would I, you know i would implore and i would say try think about something good think about you know something that you could involve yourself in that could give you so much joy you know but let the positivity flow in your words in your action look for something or do something that's going to help you transcend we will check transcend negativity okay now protect your feelings yes a lot of people you know i'm the kind of person i recall when i was um growing up um i was told one day uh, that i you you are so i'm a very passionate person okay and i can't remember what i was doing sometime and someone told me said oh you you we will check and i heard a noise she now said that you you th you you show your you show your feelings to people and most times most of people you know and many many of them are not actually feeling what you're giving out you know most of them don't like it and I'm like, okay, you know, and I was thinking, I said, then it has to be me. She was like, oh, no, 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 it's not you. These are people who are insecure in their feelings. They do not accept that somebody can be nice to them. They do not accept that some people can be kind to them or someone could actually feel the kind of pain or, you know, be able to help. No, as she said, she told me, the good thing about it was that she told me, she said, no, 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 it's not you. So you have to learn to protect your feelings. 
And you know, when you're able to protect your feelings from, you know, name calling, uh, people who say things that are mean about you, when you're able to do that, you know, you find out that you have the upper hand at all times. You always have the upper hand because what they're expecting from you is to, with a comeback. And then, you know, you're not giving them the comeback when they want it. Okay. Now, um, another one is, you know, to defend yourself exactly what I projected in the locker room that day. I did not give a hoot who was there. I just gave it to defend yourself. It's important because when bullies notice that you cannot defend yourself, you see them, they begin to fly high. Since that incident happened, many of them, or most, those of them, these three ladies who have been, you know, on this campaign, they have been so uneasy. I don't really care, you know, but I noticed and I really, I thought, you know, that same day I met another lady who walked up to me. I'd met her once and we hadn't seen again. And she walks up to me that same day this all this happened. It was like she was trying to, it was like she was trying to say something. She was trying to say something with her attitude. And she told me, she was like, oh, bonjour, Juliette, ça va? And I was like, yes, ça va, you know? And she was like, oh, it's been a long time we saw the last time. And then while we're talking, this, you know, famous uh, musketeers or whatever, I don't know who they call themselves, enter. You know, and I just entered. The woman was like, "Oh my God, it's so good to see you." This, is... and you know, she was kind of amplifying the, the 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 greeting. And I was like, "I'm so late." She was like, "Oh no, no I want to talk to you more." And I was like, "Okay, fine." You know, maybe we'll have coffee sometime. She was like, "Of course, we'll, I would love to have coffee with you." You know, so I noticed that she was quite friendly, and another lady was extremely. So I now realize that you know. They were, you know, their, 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 their bullying nature, their intimidation. People knew it. They understood. They felt it, you know. So, and when I saw, you know, when, when I got the other people who came talking to me, I then understood that, you know, it was like, oh, someone has actually stood up to these women for once, you know. And then, live in a very powerful and positive way. And that's exactly, you just... Do it. Speak. What is your business? Exactly like I told her. Well, then if you are not the one who put my bag on the floor, shut up. It doesn't concern you. And it is not you. And it's not your place to tell me when it's enough. I decide when it's enough. Not you. It's just like someone who is grieving. And you tell the person, oh, it's enough. It's enough. No, you don't tell the person when to grieve. You don't tell the person when to stop grieving. The person stops grieving when the person stops once. Or feels it's okay. Or it's time to stop grieving. It's not you. Okay? So, live in a positive and a powerful way. And I said, set boundaries. Um, and use your voice. And that's what I'm doing here. Use your voice. You cannot let bullies get away with things. You have to check them. You must always check them. It's important. And when you can use facts, do it. But make sure that you always check them. It's important. If you've never had a voice before, I'm going to tell you, you know, because it's so easy to always hide behind someone, you know, who is going to be doing it for you. But always ask yourself, you know, if this person isn't here, what will I do? So that you'll be able to find your voice. And it starts with one day when you just say, no, enough is enough. Okay? So feel free to ask me any questions. This is where this video ends today. And I really do hope that you guys are going to, you know, like, comment, share this video. And do not fail to, of course, subscribe to my channel and push notifications button, notification button so that you will always be amongst the first people to know when I upload a video. And until my next video, I love you all. Thank you so, so, so much for being here. And before I go, I want to say thank you to the new subscribers who have joined the family. I'm so glad, I'm so happy that you've joined and I hope you stick around more often. Share my videos and get, tell your friends about me. Tell your friends about this cutie here, you know, so that they will also join the family. All right, so until my next video, I love you all so much. Thank you, bye-bye.